Hey, folks, welcome to Spooky Appalachia. <laughs> hey, everybody, how you doing? Uh, my name's Jimmy. That's Jerry, my co-host. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, before we get into this, I just wanted, like I said, to let a lot of folks know this is not a live stream. This is being pre-recorded. Um, a lot of folks, when they tune into these, they think it's a live stream. It's just one they've missed. Uh, now, this is just one pre-recorded uh, with me and Jimmy here. So, uh, I said, we figured we'd come back home and, uh, do some more, uh, just old spooky stories and stuff, you know, everything, you know, uh, you know, just stories from the porch, you know. We've been trying to record this one for about a month now, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stuff we keeps have, happening. Man. It oh, never fails, man. folks. Every yeah. single time, uh, we would plan. I mean, sometimes we would literally be like, just a, like an hour away from recording, you know. And something would go wrong, or you know, here and there, or, it was just crazy. We were we recorded once, and um, the files went missing. Yeah, yeah, the first part of the files went missing. We couldn't find it, so I thought, like, well, you know, we'll just, I guess we'll just have to re-record the first part of it, you know. And then everything just started going downhill from there, and then you know, Jimmy went out here and beat his finger up. So. Yeah. <laughs> then found out then found out the doctor's office calls and uh says i need to come in right away the bone doctor yeah and yeah, come yeah. to find out uh i had a second break they didn't notice until they started looking at it again yeah uh, if that crazy, doesn't beat man. all i i don't know <laughs> yeah then, i mean i thought that... i was in a lot of pain but dang right who would have guessed which you know i have heard a lot of people say that uh Sometimes, you know, you can't see us like uh, if it's more severe than what it is till like the swelling goes down. If they do like a second x-ray or something, sometimes they may be even more damaged than that. Huh. That might have been Crazy. what happened. Yeah. It may have been. But anyhow, here we are. We're back. And hopefully, like I said, we'll get to get back on the ball. And uh, because we know you folks really love and enjoy these collabs. And, you know, when we get together and jaw and hang out and tell some stories and things like that so hopefully we can get back on the ball with them and our neighbors won't call the police on us this time yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh well but anyway uh I, would, I do want to say before we get started here uh if you are not subscribed or familiar with spooky appalachia be sure and head over and uh grab him up subscribe you know and check his channel out you'll find a lot of me over there he does some amazing stuff uh you know, spooky stories from ghosts, you know, haints, cryptids, just all kinds of good stuff. And locations. Yeah, but um, I guess, yeah, I guess that's where I'm different than most people. I actually live right in the center of Appalachia. And yeah. uh, I go to a lot of these places and film, talk about the history and the haunts with the owners. Um, actually just went to Sweet Spring Sanita Sanit Sanitarium. I'm sorry, I can't talk today. Uh, I, uh, I, I guess I kind of made friends online with the, the lady that runs it, Cindy, and she's been trying to get me to come out there for a while and the stars finally aligned and we were both able to go out there. Um, really awesome place. Huge. We, we filmed for probably three hours and um right. yeah we didn't even get all of it that's yeah, how that's huge it is I, I couldn't believe it um she said for us to come back anytime we want and uh i might have to take her up on that <laughs> definitely man definitely sounds like a place i'd want to check out for sure yeah yeah i i think i'm gonna do multiple videos out there that place is so awesome and she's so awesome and been sharing me out constantly it's uh wow i, I it's like i hit the jackpot with that one hey you can't beat that man you know yeah. good location good people you know I and say, it's, it's only an hour people yeah it's only an hour away from me too hey you can't beat that man yeah can't beat it yeah all but, right folks so uh since jimmy is our special guest i guess i'll let him have the floor and tell us our first story i thought you were telling the first story jared well i thought you was well, I guess we got a problem. We got a situation <laughs> here, don't we? Well, we flipped a coin, but it landed straight up and down. So we're being. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. 
Right. Well, I, 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 well, I can go first if you want. No, no, no. I'm totally fine with going first. Um, okay. th this one's one that was sent to me that I found. Um, I, I didn't realize I had such a really great story. Uh, it was a fan who uh, had an experience. Uh, her and her mom went on a trip to New Orleans back in 2013. In uh, July, they had something happen to them. This is crazy. I I was looking back through, trying to find my next story, and I found that in the uh, in the email, and I was blown away by it. But anyway, That's I'll awesome. go ahead and read it. Me and my mama was in New Orleans on July 5th, 2013. We got on a trolley to, to go sightsee and grab some lunch. We got off the trolley and were walking around along the sidewalk, and there was a men's clothing store, a restaurant, and a souvenir store. The restaurant lunch special was shrimp and grits. It was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. When we entered, a lady yelled at us and said that they were closed. A man walking out looked at us and said the food was good and then continued on out the restaurant. He was very friendly. We said we would come back tomorrow before 2 p.m. We thought it was strange that the restaurant would close so early in a tourist city. The next day, we went to this so-called restaurant. It wasn't there. It was just a men's clothing store and a souvenir shop. No restaurant at all. We stood there with our mouths open. We couldn't speak, and I got the chills just talking about it. So I guess they were maybe ghosts. And we never saw the lady that yelled at us again. It's strange because we didn't know that ghosts ate food. The next week, yeah. I was looking at a show on haunted places in New Orleans, and it said that the dead walks among us, the living. Those were definitely dead people. Yeah, see, that's, oh, man, spooky. And not only spooky, you know, it's just wild, you know, because you think, you know, was it a ghost story or was it possibly maybe something like a time slip? Oh, I didn't think about that. Now, when I, I featured it on my channel, that. I think I mentioned uh, there was a, I read in a book about a ghost house similar to this that, uh, some people were uh, either driving by or hiking or something, and they noticed a house they'd never seen before, and when they got up close to it, it disappeared. Now, this was in Virginia. Now, my cousin told me a story once. So back when he was a young teenager, uh, this happened back in, I'd say, the mid to late 1980s. He said to him and his buddies was out running around, you know, this is back before uh, cell phones and, you know, things like that so you know back then you know that was pretty much what people had to do you know you got in your car and you took off you know <laughs> well he said that they was just out riding around you know and uh said it was kind of a boring night nobody's really out in town to hang out with or anything so he said they just kind of just started driving around well he said they hit this old back road and they come up on this old house and he said they got out and went in you know Said there, were, there weren't no, you know, no trespassing signs nowhere or anything. So they got out and just, you know, looking around. And he said when they got in there, he said they, they went inside. And he said it, this house was old. It was falling apart. He said, I mean, it was just, it was just unreal, you know, how just decayed and dilapidated it, dilapidated it was, you know. And he said, well, he said he goes up the staircase he says a little two-story house you know and said he went up the staircase and he said something 
just kind of told him, you know, check, you know, look in the, look in the loft, you know. Well, he said it was the old kind that had the little pull string, you know, and the ladder comes down. But he said he poked his head up there. He said it was like a brand new house up there. And he said there was even a dress hanging up there that was old timey, but he said it looked brand new. And he said it still had the uh, plastic covering over it and everything. He said it had like a uh, knitting stuff, you know, crochet and stuff, all kinds of things up there. He said even the windows looked almost new, you know. He said it was unreal. Well, he said he climbed down and told his buddy, he said, hey, you got to check this out, you know. You know, he said, you ain't going to believe this. Well, so he told his, you know, his buddy, he told him, he said, you know, you know, what's the deal and everything? He said, well, he told him, you know, he said, go up there and look at the part of the rest of the house. Well, I said his buddy climbed that ladder, stuck his head up there and looked around. So he come back down and said, what are you talking about? He said, the dress and stuff. He said, there ain't no dress up there. He said, why well, you're crazy? And he said, I just looked and he went back up there again. Well, I said, when he went back up there and looked around, he said, there was nothing. He said, the windows were busted out. The wood was old, rotted. He said, a big hole in the wall that had rotted through. He said he believed for just a split second he might have got a glimpse back in time of the old house. Wow. I said, dude, I forgot all about that to you until I said we got talking about that. That's weird. Yeah. And he said, What do you think day, it was? I don't know, man. I said, I don't know. Maybe it was, uh, I don't know if maybe, the, maybe a spirit there wanted him to see that for some reason. That's what or, I thought. Or maybe it's like you said it, about the New Orleans when it was like a time yeah, slip. Maybe type some thing. kind of time slip lot. But he said, that, he said, man, he said, I know I've told people that. And he said, I know a lot of the people think I'm crazy. <laughs> he said, I didn't tell a lot of people for a long time. But You know, that gets me thinking too. Um I think it was twenty. It was sometime before uh, before COVID. Me and my wife was uh, on a hike in the woods with the dog. Um, it wasn't like a trail or anything, you know. We were just going out through the woods. It wasn't. I think it was the next town over. We uh, we were at a park and decided to go check out the woods for some reason. I don't know. We just walked through the woods. Uh, we walked for maybe a mile or something. And um, sure. I found a, a, a staircase out in the middle of the woods. It, it oh, looked man. like it was, uh, it, it wasn't aged or anything or beat up. The paint was still, I mean, it was just a staircase coming up out of the ground. Like a, you know, like a staircase you would have in your house, just out in the woods. It was so weird. That's strange. Yeah, and then we went back, uh, I forget when it was, it was maybe a month or two later to, you know, check it out again, right. and show somebody, and uh, it wasn't there. Really? Yeah, I thought that was pretty strange, I mean, it, it, that it's, is wild. It's, it's pretty strange, I guess you could explain it away, as like, I don't know, you I mean, I guess the only thing I could think of is uh, part of a like a house had been in the process of being knocked down, but I didn't see any lumber around there or anything. Right. Yeah, something like that. You know, you you think you'd see like you know sawdust where they'd cut yeah. or pieces of wood or uh, something. You know. I just thought that was very strange. I mean, how does a how does a staircase in the middle of the woods just go gone? Really? Yeah. You know, that's trace. Trace. that's. That's wild, man. Yeah, it was pretty odd. I, I mean, that just made your your story made me think of that. Man, that's wild. Well, dang, you got we got uh, three stories out of one just that there. <laughs> that's <laughs> well, pretty I don't think awesome. Mind, that is pretty awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now this next one was sent to me uh, by a good brother, Joaquin Guzman. All right, he says. Now this story was told to him by his grandpa, and was also in the Blue Creek, Ohio area. He said, my grandpa said that back when he was a boy, you know, back in the 60s or 70s, he said him and a bunch of his buddies would go out and carry on, you know, have fun, stuff, everything, around this graveyard, and said that him and his mom 
I said his mom told him, said, uh, stop doing that. I said, before something gets you after, you know, gets after you for doing that. Well, I said, they just kept on doing it. You know, I said, they done it for two or three more days after that. And I said, the last time they was there, you know, cutting up and carrying on stuff, you know, I said, they was, uh, you know, just carrying on, just acting a fool and stuff, you know. And, uh, Said out of the corner of his eye, said they seen something sitting on one of the graves. Hmm. Well, so he went up to the rest of his putties and said they all turned around and looked at it. And said it was a pure black shatter sitting on one of the graves. And said it had fingernails about five or six inches long. And said it had an apple. And said it was a peeling it with its fingernail. And said the peel of that apple never did break when it was appealing it. And said that they stood up and said it took about a second or two to register, you know, what they were seeing, but said when it did, said they took up and run like to see their britches was on far. <laughs> <laughs> and said that they run for about a good mile before they stopped. And you know, talking about what they'd seen. Well, said they all went back home, said he told his mama, and said she told him. I said, well, I told you about messing around that graveyard. And said he never went and messed around any graveyards again after that. I thought, dang, man, that was a wild one right there. Well, it kind of makes me think of the you-know-who sisters that uh, every time we mention it, something bad happens. Uh, I'm not yeah. going to gonna mention them. Yeah, we just say the sisters now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's caused us couple issues with these recordings, like we mis mentioned earlier. Yep, yep. And it was just kind of odd, you know, like I said, when uh, everything was going smooth, you know, uh, we'd get to meet up, do our collabs, everything, you know, everything was going smooth, everything, till we started talking about, you know. Doing some stuff on the sisters. Yeah, and, and then, then that's when everything started that, going downhill. So. I don't know, man. It is something weird. Every well, like time said, we... Oh, you know, yeah, we should probably th stop talking about them. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we might have <laughs> Um, it, it also makes me think, I, I heard a story on TV um, not too long ago where uh, three teenagers was messing around in a graveyard at night drinking, and a uh, dude uh, peed on a grave. Oh, man. And uh, then all of a sudden... Uh, some weird stuff started happening. He saw a figure point at him and they got out of there pretty quick. And then, uh, after that, he started, he, he was haunted after that. And, uh, all this crazy stuff happened to him. I think he said on the show that, uh, maybe it had never even left him or something. He was having all kinds of bad luck and seeing stuff. And, Dang, man. Yeah. Well, you know, you gotta man. think, you know, I remember being, a, you know, being a young and back growing up, you know, and whenever we go to the graveyard or cemetery stuff for decoration day or whatever, or just to go put flyers on somebody's grave or something other, you know, we weren't allowed to run around and jump, scream, holler, nothing like that. You know, you walked, you minded your manners, you didn't walk on the graves. Yep. And you was quiet, you was respectful. Yep. Same here. You know, so... When somebody goes into a place of rest like that, you know, and just disrespects it like that, man, you know, that's just asking for it. Yeah. It's like, dang, man. Yeah, I can't. Well, you know, teenagers, you know. Well, yeah, you know, but like I said, I was a teenager too. <laughs> yeah, I never <laughs> but, did not. I didn't yeah. ever do anything like that. Yeah, no, nah, ain't no way. Mm-mm. For one, even as a teenager, uh, you know, I know what I'd get if I, when I got home with my mom, <laughs> I heard about it. <laughs> Man. Yeah. But I guess that maybe that'll teach him a lesson. <laughs> no, I think it did. Um, well, you know, I guess I could go ahead with the next story. The floor is yours. The floor is mine. Um, this next one, um, well, all mine have been spooky Appalachia stories. Some of y'all may have noticed, um, you know, yeah, yeah, you like them. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, just come over to my channel. Forget all about that Jared King TV. <laughs> There's a lady behind. Yeah. I'm joking. So, this one was uh, sent in by a fan of mine um, who's actually a Bigfoot researcher. But uh, she's had a couple of uh, ghostly experiences, too. Oh, neat. Um, and this is one from back when she worked as a 911 dispatcher back in uh, 2018, I think she said. I was working as a dispatcher for our local county sheriff's office when I got a call from someone stating that their relative who was undergoing cancer treatment had stopped answering the door and their mail had been piling up. I put out the call and the SIF sergeant stated that he would go since it would likely be a DOA dead on arrival and he'd have to go up there anyway because of it. When, we, when he arrived at the house, he radioed in saying he s had seen someone pull half the drapes back at the window with their hand, peering out at him. After making entry, he discovered that the individual was deceased, just like he thought, and was located in the bedroom, which is the same bedroom he said he saw someone look out of. After clearing the house, it was deemed empty other than the deceased individual. Once the sergeant got back to dispatch, I jokingly asked, Would you see in the window a ghost? He responded, I sure saw something. What do you think, Jared? I think I would have ran and never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> I'd left the patrol car. I'd left everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And oh, that man. was that was a good one. I'm gonna have to find a way to. I think this is one of the older stories, not from not the 2022 ones we've been working on uh, re-recording. Right. But uh, this seems like it might be one we might wanna revisit one day. Yeah, um, I remember when you told that. I remember when I first heard that one, man. I was thinking, man, how creepy, you know. You know what? I may have read this one. I can't remember. May have. I don't remember. I said, I just yeah, it may. It. I think now that I think of it, I think it was the first one I did when I took over. May have been. Yeah, it's yeah. But I remember like I said it was. I was thinking, good, you know, it's just one of them that gives you the willies, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It kind of also makes you wonder, you know. Like, uh, we got a, uh, a lot of people that watches, you know, and a lot of people that's, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, firefighters to, you know, uh, law enforcement, you know, like, uh, our, you know, our good brother, uh, Steve from, uh, um, alligator horse, you know, yeah. he's, uh, you know, he was on the police force for a long time. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, big shout out to all of our brothers and sisters, you know, from the, you know, the law enforcement and, uh, you know, rescue squad, you know, firefighters, anything like that, you know, big shout out and God bless them all. Yeah, um, definitely. But it makes no. you wonder, you know, just how many of them has spooky stories like that, that they've never told anybody. I would love to get some more like that. I would love. That would be awesome. So, um, AD had a really spooky one that he told on his channel, too, when he was a police officer. Did you ever hear that? Yep, I sure did. That was a good one. That yeah. was a real good one. And, um, you know, I've, and I've, you know, talked to a few police officers just like that, you know. And they're like, well, at the time, you know, you don't want to get ridiculed or anything, you know. So you don't want to come out and say, you know, it was a ghost, you know. They say, but it's just something all they could say was could say was you know it's just something I couldn't explain. Didn't one of us get a uh, uh, the UFO story from a police officer one time too? I think we did. We no, may have both did. have actually. I, I'm trying to think what that one was, but I'm pretty sure we we may have both got it. I said I believe we did. As a matter huh. of fact, okay, been a while, but like I said yeah. I, I remember it. 
the but man. yeah, yeah, just to just to show, you know, you folks do get a lot of good ones, and we definitely oh, yeah. would like more. Absolutely. Uh, when you guys are watching this, uh, you will see our emails and stuff up there. Oh, so you will? Feel free to send uh, either of us any uh, spooky stories that you want. I said we love them all. Every last uh, one of them. That's right. We want them all. And then some. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this next Just don't story. get discouraged if it takes, you know, a month or two yeah. for it to... Yeah, because sometimes we get so uh, you know we got to get caught up and you know, yeah. you know everything else. So sometimes it takes us a little while, but we'll get to them eventually. <laughs> yeah, promise. But I said this next one is a witch story that was sent in to me by uh, AR American, and uh, he says hello. Said uh, really enjoy listening to your stories. So my granny and grandpa was from Kentucky, moved to Michigan in 1950. See, my granny told me many stories about growing up. Figured I'd share this one with you. Uh, said, my granny was eight years old when this happened. So her folks lived on a farm. Had a few cows for milking, things like that. Well, one morning, my granny's mother went out to milk the cows. Now, this was a daily thing, so they had to milk. Well, they'd also sell or, you know, trade you know a little bit you know what they didn't need you know and stuff well when she started milking that first cow she got blood instead of milk the other two cows were fine then this went on for a few days nobody could figure out what was going on well after a few days the second cow started doing the same thing the local animal doctor couldn't figure out why them cows was milking blood instead of, instead of milk well, after about a week, the last cow started milking blood instead of milk, too. Now, my great-granny and pa was worried. You know, they was poor folks, you know. Well, I said they needed that milk for the family. You know, and they also sold some, traded some, and things like that to get what they needed. Well, not knowing what to do and scared half to death and, you know, just worried, you know, getting desperate. Said my granny's pa... And two brothers hid out in the barn. Around midnight, around midnight, 1 a.m., something like that, when her oldest brother seen a big black dog sneaking on to the farm right there in the barn. Well, they watched it for a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. They said that dog went from stall to stall, sucking the milk from them three cows. Well, said, about that time, the dog got to the second stall. Said they had seen enough. Said them being in the loft and looking over hay bales. Said her oldest brother drawed a bead right on that old dog. Said, now, said, hey, don't know whether to you know, jerk the trigger or what. Her nerves got to him, said, but. Said so his shot landed right in the hip instead of the heart. Said so he hit that dog in the left hind quarters of the hip. So that dog stood straight up. Said so it just blowed her mind, you know. And said so it jumped over that stall and run out of that barn into the woods. Now the landlord had a big black dog. So Granny's daddy and two brothers went the next morning to the landlord to see if it was his dog. Well, when they got over there, they saw that the local doctor was there. and said that the doctor was there pulling a bullet out of the landlord's left Ooh. heel. Some granny said that they moved right then and there from that farm as fast as they could. They said the old landlord was a witch. <laughs> Man. That right there, man. Especially, you know, when it comes to, especially, you know, like back in the old days, back in the mountains and things like that, you know, that was one thing that folks worried about a lot, you know, was, you know, the old mountain witches, you know, bewitching them and things like that, you know, because a lot of times they didn't know who it was. Mm -hmm. 
you know, sometimes it'd be folks that uh, they go to church with, you know, go to preaching with, things like that. You know, sometimes, you know, they'd be, you know, they'd hide right there in plain sight. Wouldn't let nobody know they's a witch. That's scary. Yeah. You know, I've heard people talk about, uh, say a lot of times folks would lay a, a broom either across the top of the door or lay it uh, across the front of the door. Said they'd invite people in. Said if they stepped over top of it, they weren't a witch. But said if they refused to come in, they's a witch. I've seen um, some houses. If you come, I've been to some houses before. That uh, if you walked in, you turn around and look above the doorway, there'd be like an old broom mounted, mm -hmm. and wondered yep. what that was. Is that? Yep. That's the, what it I is. I guess that's the same thing, huh? Yeah, I'm guessing what it is. Huh. Now, I've heard folks say that uh, you'd have to watch out for uh, witch bullets. Said that they said the old witches back in would send in witch bullets too. And said what it would look like is just like a bundle of hair, you know, or kind of like a dust bunny, but it would just be like wads of hair. And said it would just blow, you know, across the, the floors and stuff. And said if it touched you, they could be witchy. Hmm. Wow. It's wild, that's, ain't it? That's creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, that's one thing that I always got them, you know, as they said a lot of times, you wouldn't ever know who it was. Jared King TV. <laughs> no, I don't think he's smart enough. Caused me to smash my <laughs> finger. <laughs> oh, man. Well, um... Suppose I could go into another one. Yeah, since you're this uh, special guest, won't you tell us one more, then we'll end it there. Oh, let's see. I wonder if I should switch which one I'm doing. I mean, I, I had one I was saving for last. I might, uh, I might switch to this one then. So this is the last one. Yeah, okay. we're up on about 32 minutes, roughly, so. All right, all right. <clears throat> so this is one from uh, way back. Way back, Spooky Appalachia. Um, the lady that sent this in, uh, she has been a longtime fan of the channel. Um, one of my first supporters, I think, too. I mean, she's been with me since I, th I think since I was around 200 subscribers back then is, is when she joined That's up. Awesome. Yeah, and she still listens to this day. I mean, it's uh, I'm I'm at my two year anniversary mark. That's How crazy awesome. is that? Yeah, yeah. Don't two seem like years. two years is. No, what's crazy is I was looking back and I've been, uh, I've been talking with you for over a year and working with you on stuff. I looked at the, the, I think the first video we did together on my channel where you came on alive was, uh, a, like a year and three months ago. I think I saw the other day. Can you believe that? Man, and it don't seem like it. And then in a way it kind of seems longer, don't it? Yeah, it does. Kind of wild how that works out, like yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and get into this one. Uh, it's about an experience she had at a uh, place called Emily's Bridge in Vermont. Ooh. It's a famous place. Hey, spooky Appalachia! Today I'll be recounting one of my stories from Stowe, Vermont, for you, because I thought it seemed appropriate because of the haunted bridge video you just put out. Emily's Bridge is a covered bridge in Stowe, Vermont. It was built in 1844 and goes over Gold Brook. It is the only wooden covered bridge in the state that was built with Howe trusses and is a public roadway. So much for the general knowledge. Now the intro on the legend. 
In the 1850s, Emily, a teenage bride-to-be, was a poor girl who had fallen in love with a local wealthy man. His parents refused the wedding, and he told Emily to wait for him on the bridge, and they would run off together. Alas, the man never showed, and Emily jumped off the bridge into the brook below, where she landed on the rocks and passed away. And now on to my experience. When I was 14 years old and my family lived in Connecticut, we also had a place in Vermont that we would spend most of our time. I would sometimes go with friends to a pizza place outside of Stowe. A group of us were heading back from the pizza place on a late fall night so it was dark and cold. My friends all said, let's go over Emily's bridge. It's supposed to be haunted. I was a bit hesitant because I knew I was a magnet for the, par for the paranormal most of my young life. I was not afraid, but I was still startled when I would have an encounter. We drove onto the bridge and parked the car. My friends all wanted to get out and take a look and see if they could see Emily. Me, not so much. But I agreed to do it, not wanting to be left alone in the car on a dark dirt road on a wooden bridge many feet over a brook. We all walked around, but there was nothing. Still, I was getting my psychic hotline network vibes. We got back into the car, turned on the lights. Everyone else was making fun of the legend. Never do that. All of a sudden, the car died. Every electronical part of the car was completely dead. No engine, no heat, no headlights. We could not get the car started, no matter what we did. My friends began to panic because it was a desolate area at night and very cold. We were sitting smack dab on the middle of the bridge. My friends were just talking about who was going to go outside, pop the hood and see what was wrong. Suddenly, the radio came on by itself. The only light in the car the only part of the car that was actually working, and a song came on the radio titled Emily. I kid you not. Loud and sad, sung by a woman singer. This song was an Elton John song, but it was being sung by the saddest female voice. Needless to say, everyone screamed and panicked because now we knew she was there. And then, thankfully, out of the blue, the car started on its own. We got out of there, none of us wanting to ever talk about it. I have not had the chance to go back, but seeing as we will be moving here soon, I will try to visit there as an adult. I will not make fun of Emily, though. I do not blame her. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a that good one. That was a good one, man. Yeah. Yeah, I will have to I I'll have to agree. You know, don't never make fun of the legends. No. Yeah, never especially a good if you're idea. at the locations. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's one thing I never do in my location videos. I'm always respectful. Uh, I don't do anything out of the ordinary. You know, I kind of say to myself, "Huh? Yeah, I'm not ghost yeah. hunting either." I've had a couple people worried about me some, picking up something. You know, I I mean, it wouldn't be any different than a maintenance worker or something going there to do something. Not yeah, stirring up check. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah, I'm no, not stirring up anything. Just going over the history, talking about the haunts, and filming it. Yeah, I've never had any issues. We've had a couple of creepy things happen. And one thing, uh, mentioned at Sweet Springs again, uh, we did have we did hear some thumps after we finished recording. 
Uh, to my knowledge, that was the only thing that we uh, encountered. But uh, people always find stuff in the videos, the haunted places we go film. All, like almost always find something. Oh yeah, so, it never fails, man. Like I said it, it's it's wild, but neat. And we're doing something a little different with this next one. I, I, I forgot to mention, we're doing a giveaway. The details will be at the end of the video. So be sure and watch, folks. Yeah, how to enter. Um, it's a little giveaway. I mean, it's not out of the ballpark. I think, it, I think it's going to be for a sticker. But uh, go watch it. And at the end of the video, catch the details for uh, how to enter and win. Yeah. It's gonna be really I, that, neat, folks. I think that video. I think people are gonna like that one. I, I definitely want y'all to be on the lookout for it. it. I think it. There's a good chance we're gonna have it ready by Friday. Oh, cool, good deal. I'll be yeah. sure and share it out so that way. Maybe folks, uh, because a lot of times, you know, I know a lot of folks have on, you know, both my channel and yours have said, you know, hey, I ain't been getting notifications. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we, that's why I me mean, Jimmy and I, we, you know, we always try to share, you know, each other's yeah. videos out in case, you know, some folks don't get the notification. Maybe some folks will be aware that it's up, you know. I think this is one that people aren't going to want to miss. Absolutely. Uh, that yeah. place has got the, I mean, the history goes back to the 1700s on that place. Oh, neat. Yeah. Man. All kinds of famous people went to it. But yeah, I'll get into that more in the video. <laughs> awesome. Good deal. Yeah. Well, folks, we'd like to thank Spooky Appalachia for coming on here and uh, hanging out with us again. And uh, you'll see a lot more of him in the future. And there's definitely, if you go back through the videos, you'll see more of him from the past. And uh, like I said, definitely a lot more to come um, on both channels. So like I said, be sure, you know, uh, you can see me or me over there on his channel. We do some uh, collabs like this over there. Yeah, almost uh, every week, Jared. I, I, nearly every week, Jared is on my channel. We're doing something. Yep, yep. Well, you know, we got a good work there. Yep, work ethic, yep. So, yep. So, but like I said, uh, and folks love the collabs. You know, we just have a lot of fun doing them, and uh, always good time and stuff. So, like I said you, you'll be seeing a lot more of him and uh, a lot more of me over there. So, like I said be sure and. Uh, if you're new to my channel here, be sure and subscribe. And also, I say head over to Spooky Appalachia and subscribe as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely do that. The bigger my numbers are, the more of these uh, locations I can get into, too. Yeah, <clears throat> that's right, because uh, a lot we've said in the past, you know, it's kind of sad, you know, really. But a lot of times, you know, it, a lot of it depends on your, you know, subscriber numbers, depending on whether you can get into a place or not. Yep. You know, so, but you know, hey, it is what it is. So, like I said, we're trying to get Jimmy, you know, get him, uh, get his channel took off there pretty good a little bit. So, you know, get his uh, foot into more doorways there. So, be sure to head over and subscribe and show some love and support. Thanks, Jared. I appreciate it. And everybody hey. that that's subscribed or subscribing, I yeah, appreciate every one of y'all. Hey, no I think I'm almost at 4K. Yeah, yeah, you're getting close, oh, man. Yeah. Getting close. You've been cool. doing awesome, man. Thanks. But uh, anyway, folks, thanks so much for joining us. Like I said, we'll see you again in the next round. Yeah, we got to uh, get going. They've already called the cops on us. Yep, yep. Not to mention Jimmy's called them on us. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, folks, we love you both. Uh, we love you both. We love you bunches from the bottom <laughs> of our hearts. <laughs> we love you both. <laughs> Lord, it never fails. Uh, but both anyway. of you people that are listening, only two of you <laughs> listened. That's right. I'll do of you. Yeah. yeah. Be sure and tell one another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give each oh, other a hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell each other how you liked it, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. Meet up, tell her, you know, regroup, discuss it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but be sure, and I said, to subscribe. And uh, if you have any stories or anything that you'd like for us to share on here or over on Jimmy's channel, like I said, uh, our emails will be right there on the screen. So feel free to send you know, as many in as you want because we love them all. From cryptid stories, you know, ghost hank stories, or just, you know, stories about UFOs. Yeah, UFOs too. Yeah, you know, just anything. If it's got to do with, you know, Appalachia and stuff, we like it. 
No, some, I mean, sometimes we'll do stuff from outside Appalachia, too, beyond the hills. Yeah, beyond the hills. We're going to get yeah, a yeah. mountain from beyond the hills, too. That's right, because we've got a lot of folks that watch that ain't in Appalachia, but they love, the, you know, the the history and things like that, and they're mm -hmm. good folks and like to share their history, and we love history from all around. So yep. you don't have to be Appalachia. Send in your stories. Like I said, we'll share them. Definitely. So. Well, Jared, I guess we've threatened to leave enough. Maybe yeah, we should uh, actually might do, do it, it this time again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, we love you bunches. God bless you and your kin. And have a good one. Night, folks. <laughs>